I'm looking at the clock on the wall. It says that it is time to start the show. And have we got a treat for you today because this is a special bullpen episode. And it's special because we're going to be discussing the topic men and the holiday. So if you are a human being of the male persuasion, if you are the possessor of a Y chromosome, this is the show for you because this is your chance to air your grievances, spill your guts, and stake your claim in this world as a man. So right now it's time to climb up into the treehouse, pull up the ladder, hang out that sign that says no girls allowed because this is the bullpen and that's the way it is in here. All right, my guest today in studio, Tom Martin. Glad you're here, Tom. Thank you. How'd you enjoy the snowstorm here recently in Colorado? Uh, there wasn't much enjoying. No, no. You live up the hill, so there you was, got... Yeah, there was like six hours of shoveling, <laughs> snow blowing. That's your male privilege right there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, I felt manly doing it, <laughs> but there's a limit. Yeah, there is. So snow depth. There's a limit to manliness? Yeah. It, 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 it exceeded the limit. Yeah, and we've got Alex Rodriguez who also lives in the foothills. You got nailed with the storm, too, right? I did. I did. Yeah. I uh, I plowed with my four-wheeler, though. Oh, that's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big baby. Yeah, that hurt yeah. my back. A real man be out Tore there. Me up. Well, my back's destroyed today. <laughs> I, I shoveled for 23 hours off and on. Oh, mercy. I man. did it all night long. Oh, man. Yeah. Ruben Gomez, how were you in the snow? I was okay, actually. It, it only took me about four hours to shovel. But what I had a neighbor world? come over and help How me. How far south amazing. do you live? Oh, I live. Oh, you had a neighbor. Yeah, I had a neighbor help, so <laughs> it would have taken twice as long. <laughs> you know what I did? Because I had back surgery, what, 14, 15 years ago. I went out every two hours all night because mm. it was going at, what, one or two hours, uh, one or two right. inches per hour. And even that was kind of heavy and wet. Once the banks on the side of the driveway got up past five, six feet, now you have to lift and throw. And so I am actually sitting on a little baby cushion here. Uh, because I hurt. Yeah, and you're a baby. Yeah, I really am. <laughs> I really am. All right, so those are our guests today. we got to get to the topic at hand, which is men and the holidays. And uh, we're recording this toward the end of the year. Um, so Thanksgiving has come and gone as we're sitting in studio. People are thinking about Christmas as we are sitting here. Uh, and you may be listening to this after Christmas Day, but it still applies. You will be in the holidays as you hear this. Unless you're in rerun season, then who knows? You could be listening to this in July. Would we run this again in July? Sure, I hope so. Sure. Christmas yeah. in July, right not? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So... Um, we'll probably dwell on Christmas and Thanksgiving a little bit, but we can drift into the other holidays if you want. Um, there's a bunch of them throughout the year that men um, really think about, and some of them I think we hate. Um, I mean, if you dare. If you dare. I shouldn't say if you want. If you dare drift into those holidays because, um, well, like Valentine's Day. You know, we almost don't dare state our opinion on that one. And yeah. uh, Oh, you probably love it anyway. You're a big squish. No, actually that one. That one I don't care much for. No, I don't know a guy who really loves Valentine's Day. Anyway, let's kick the ball down the field and get started. All right, think about the holiday schedule all year long. Guys, which of the holidays is your favorite, and which one do you hate the most? Thanksgiving is my favorite. Why? Uh, you know, there's so many memories behind Thanksgiving growing up. It was just the day that everybody got together. There was lots of good food. Um, it was a chillax day. Um, and, and that carries over into our house right now with our two daughters and my wife. We, we, just, we just have a good old time with, with just, just spending time together. And there's, there's really not a lot of pressure for gifts and commercialism. <laughs> yeah. It's on my list, too. Thanksgiving's top of the list for me because it just seems that the motives are pure. I, it's about gratitude, and you're right. I don't have to yeah. go shopping, and we actually didn't do much this year. We crashed, and exactly. uh, yeah. yeah, guys, uh, Alex, Tom, favorite holiday? It's Christmas, man. Oh, I get it. it's I Christmas, it. baby. I knew yeah, it. that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, bring it on, man. Bring it on. Turn in your man card, please. Oh, man. Play Christmas music <laughs> all year long, waiting for it. Oh, the smells, the sights. Oh, I love it. Yeah, no. <laughs> you have to surrender your man card, Tom. <laughs> I would have to say Christmas also. Oh no! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, but, but not not so much, you know, the the gifts and the the, the traditional yeah, yeah. Christmas Taking stuff. It over. It, it, it's, it's more, it's you know, everybody's 
off work and my family around that time. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's okay. That's fair. It's good to you know get together then. Uh, I like oh. I like the crowds in the in the shopping malls. You like them? Did you just say you like oh, them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no, I don't like. Oh you know, right. Whatever. You know what? This is the bullpen, guys. I think you're in the wrong. You're <laughs> in the wrong studio. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're outnumbered, man. J- just going out. The you know, mall. The, really? The deals, you love the mall. The deals you can get if you need something. <laughs> it's. I'm telling you. You know. Hopefully, by mall you mean Home Depot. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. I'll be more specific. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's not right. I did not expect that. <laughs> I All right. Thanksgiving's number one for me. My second would be the 4th of July. And yeah. I guess it's a pretty simple reason for that is I'm an immigrant. And I do believe, and we've got a series coming out here at The Voice of Prophecy on why America was built on biblical principle. And it's not what most people think, but I, I do believe that it is. And here's this grand experiment where people can relate directly to God without intervention by clergy or monarchs. And so 4th of July is huge for us. And the best 4th of July ever was probably the year after I got my American citizenship. Nice. I was like, I'm sitting there mm-hmm. and I, I didn't cry, but I did tear up a little. Mm-hmm. I did tear up a little. It was dusty out there. <laughs> really dusty. <laughs> yeah, really dusty out there. Okay, least favorite. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's, it's, uh. it's the heart one, man. Yeah. It's, it's Valentine's Day, man. That's, that's, that's my least favorite one. Why? I, I don't. I don't know. It's mushy. It's so. It's so mushy. <laughs> Says the big Christmas mush. No, man. <laughs> Christmas. Christmas is great. Christmas is. You know, it's got family. It's got food. It's got. It's got shopping. Yes, I said that on the air. It's shopping. I do like shopping. You love shopping. I too. love shopping, man. We, I, uh, yeah. But 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 Valentine's Kareem, Day. Kareem, is this man. the bullpen we're recording? <laughs> is this? Am I in the right show? Uh, oh man, Va- Valentine's Day, mushy hearts. And Do you like to wear a pretty dress when you're out shopping? A tutu. Yeah. <laughs> a tutu. <laughs> no, that's my daughter that likes to wear a tutu. Yeah. You love the show. But I've, I've got I've got little girls, and so they they love Valentine's, and and so Daddy's got to love that too with them. But but deep down inside, I just don't care that much for that holiday. There's there's a whole lot of holidays though that we have uh, during the year that I just. I don't. I don't even celebrate. I don't even think about. No. Fourth of July, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Those are my big three. The rest of them, I you can you can have them just about. President's Day. I, you know, it's it, it's pre- all those holidays end up being a work day for me. Uh, well, no, I work every holiday. I yep. actually work Christmas Day, which I just admitted on the air. Now I'll get letters, but I work Christmas Day too. I like work. I don't know. Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, I don't like that one either. I tolerate it because I'm the only man in the house. But it seems to be an obligatory thing where yeah. the man is responsible to make all the women in the house very happy that day. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got my routine. Yeah. Tom? That's for sure. Kind of the same with me. <laughs> my, my, my wife grew up with two brothers, um, and she, she, she tells me, don't get me anything. <laughs> so what do you do? You know, does she mean don't get me anything, oh, man. Or, or is she testing me to what I would get? And and that's a slippery slope right I, there, brother. I I, I I typically blow it. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know what to get. So I got my wife a vacuum. Oh that's no, practical. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, vacuum yeah. Yeah. blender, blender. And, uh, I, I I get your wife a table saw. Oh, you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll just move it into the garage. <laughs> it's too bad. Take one for the team. <laughs> that, that's what you got at Home Depot where we're Christmas shopping. Yeah, that's right. It's on sale, honey. Yeah. I got you a skill stuff for you. <laughs> My wife always blames me for doing that, though. She's like, you, you're getting yourself gifts. And I'm like, no, no, honey. They're for you. <laughs> uh, Valentine's. I, that, that'd be a show happy. in and of itself. Reading wives. Um, don't oh, get impossible. me anything never means don't get me anything. Yeah. I don't think it... I think with my wife, don't get me anything means um, keep it modest. It doesn't mean nothing, I don't think. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, but then when you don't means? keep it modest, you know, I'm talking price here. When you don't keep it modest, uh, then they're they're excited anyway. You know, so it's like, well, what did yeah. you really mean what you with really that? Want. You know? Yeah. I don't know. For our anniversary, it's like, are we going to get each other anything? No, let's not. That's a minefield. Um, <laughs> although Gene, Gene's pretty reasonable, and so we always end up doing it anyway. There's at least a card okay. yeah. or something. Ruben, least favorite. You know, um, I'm not going to say Valentine's Day because— Because your wife's going to listen to the show. You know, I mean, I'm not going to self-incriminate <laughs> myself. <laughs> but, um, you know, 
I, I, even though I don't quite fully understand it, because you know what? My Valentine's Day every day, honey, is my anniversary. If you're listening, oh, <laughs> that's just, you that's, know, oh. I don't like going along with the crowd on Valentine's Day. You know, it used to be fun when I was a kid, right? You know, you got the little little cards from your crush and your, you know, but it's still not my least favorite. You know, my least favorite, it, it's hard to say. Um, and, and I'm going to say this on a Christian radio program, but it's probably Easter. And you know why? It's not because of what it represents, but it's because of the Easter Bunny. Like all the stuff that had, like I, I don't like the Easter Bunny. Oh. <laughs> okay. You know, I wasn't tracking with you. I thought no. you were saying that was your favorite one. <laughs> it was because of the Easter Bunny. I was like, Do you Did have I say my oh, favorite? Man. No, no, no. That's not. That's my least favorite. Do you have bad Easter Bunny dreams? Yeah, really? I do. I do. You know these things in these walking costumes. I dream about them to this day. You know they they did kind of freak me out. You know. It, it makes sense because I was always afraid of clowns growing up, and so it's kind of like this massive clown with this these cute puffy cheeks, and it just bugs me to death. I I don't know. No, you know it's not. It's hard to say. You know I don't really I don't really. Oh, you know you are. Day. I am so buying you an Easter bunny but, in April. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it's it's just you know in all serious no seriousness though you know Easter's you know supposed to celebrate you know the the you know death and resurrection of of jesus of our savior and 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 i am totally for that but i've never had as a parent just reconciling what my kids see out there with what what easter is supposed to mean in the christian world right it has been really difficult for me well, can... so so you know we we sit down and we have you know we we do focus on that and i enjoy that time talking about the death and the resurrection but everything that leads up to it there you go. I can give you an out. You can just yeah. tell your family Easter's off. Yeah. Because Easter can't possibly be the anniversary of, of Christ's resurrection, right? It's the yeah. first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. That's exactly right. Yeah. So we appropriated a pagan. You can use exactly that right. in your house. Just there tell them go. it's off. That's what I'll tell my No kids. more Easter bunnies. Yeah. It's pagan. <laughs> All yes. right. Well, we are recording this toward the end of the year. Uh, and so the big holiday that's looming ahead of us now as we're sitting in studio, we've just gotten through Thanksgiving, Christmas is coming, and so what we're going to do is spend a few minutes discussing Christmas, even though we have a couple of guys in here who may not actually be men because the, the <laughs> Christmas is their favorite holiday. Christmas um, is here again. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah! Aren't you from Puerto Rico? I am. Like they can't even have an authentic Christmas in Puerto Rico. Oh, oh yeah, you oh. could decorate. Yeah, you can go to the beach right afterwards. Yeah. But you can decorate. Well, that part's okay. When I moved to LA <laughs> some years ago, I, I went outside and I thought it's nice and warm out. I'm wearing shorts. This isn't okay. But you know, in in LA, they're just over the top. They were making artificial snow and filling lots so that people could walk around in a <laughs> oh, man. winter wonderland. I think the Christian scientists, no, Scientology. Scientology has a, L. Ron Hubbard has a display in Hollywood where they have this fake powder snow and, and Christmas trees and I don't know. I don't That's know. A little too much. Mm. Maybe it's because I'm from where it really is Christmas. All right, we got to take a break. I hear the music in the background. Reem is trying to remind me that we do have to break for a commercial. And so this is a commercial you're going to want to hear. Write down the information because it's amazing. And we'll be right back. As you may know, the Voice of Prophecy is supported by people just like you. We provide Christ-centered programs and Bible studies free of charge so that no one is left out. If you've been blessed by these programs and would like to pay it forward, we invite you to visit vop.com give to make your tax-deductible donation. We're equipping the world for Christ to come, and your support will make a direct impact on so many lives. That's vop.com give. Earthquakes, tornadoes, wildfires. Around us, homes are being lost, lives are threatened, and some people are asking the question, does God even care about me? The Bible answers that question, and what it says is very encouraging. Find out what God says regarding this topic and some of life's greatest issues in our free Discover Bible Guides. Go to VOP.com and click on Study, or call us 888-456-7933. We 
are back from the break. This is Men on Christmas. It's a special episode of The Bullpen. We're sitting in studio and talking about holidays in general, but we are recording this toward the end of the year. So the big holiday, the one that is looming on the horizon, is Christmas. So, guys, are you one of those desperate, lost-looking men who does your... I already know the answer to this one. <laughs> I'm looking at the two of you. You, do, you love them all, apparently, but... Are you, I'll ask it anyway, are you one of those lost-looking men who's at the mall on December 24? I'm at the mall on December 24th, but I'm not lost. No. <laughs> no. You wait till the 24th? <clears throat> I, I, I'll go on the 24th, but I've been going since uh, since Thanksgiving. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. <laughs> Black Friday, man. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. nothing but men in the mall on the 24th. That's that's true. I've been there. Yeah. I've yeah. been there. In fact, I've I've even rolled into the mall <laughs> where it was like, Five thirty, and they closed at five. I'm like, oh. oh no, you missed it. I missed it. Well, it's not that I missed everything. It's just that I missed. Like Less I said, kind of like the Valentine's Day. You, you just don't know what's good enough. <laughs> so <laughs> so you you know sh- should there be one more? So do you second guess yourself? You get something, and then a many week later, times. yeah, many, many times. I do that. Well, I... Well, not so much second guess on what I've got, but I second guess on how much I've got. Oh. You know, is it like, enough? Y- yeah, yeah. And is it enough? Yeah. Seems to be. You but, said you you mess you up never, Valentine's Day. Do you y- mess y- up Christmas? I don't think so. Not anymore. <laughs> not, not anymore. Not after his wife has had a few yeah. talks with him. <laughs> he gets it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we talk a lot about it nowadays, and <laughs> and she tells me this and this. So if if you know if you get what's on her list, you'd do good. Yeah. That's why I like Amazon. They can actually build a list with the exact item. Mm-hmm. And I don't have to go to the mall. Click, click, but click. That's not, but, that, but that's... <laughs> but it, you'd miss the joys. But is, that really, but is it really that that fun getting a gift for somebody that they say, hey, I, I want that? Well, my wife well, gives why, me why a why range. Just, why she gives me like 30 the... things, and I pick two or three. Yeah, that, that's not bad. No. I like surprising, but... Uh. I build an Amazon list all year long. Oh, hey, when an ad, an ad pops up, my wife would like that. Stick it in the file, and then when comes Christmas, with three clicks and five minutes, I'm done. Oh, you're a <laughs> you're a closet Christmas shopper then. No, no. All no, year no. long you're going. <laughs> yeah, now it comes out. I knew it. I just knew it. No, I'm trying to avoid the disappointment on my family's faces. I think that's what <laughs> you you a twenty fourth shopper. You know, I have been. I have been. Um, it's not fun. No. I don't. You know, the shelves I, are empty. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. But the internet has made things so much easier. I so. remember when Tickle Me Elmo was um Tickle Me Elmo was all the rage what. Oh yeah. It must be going it on was, 20 years ago. Yeah. You could not find a tickle ago, yeah. and on the 24th fat chance. That's the year I learned the do you do not wait. Yeah. <laughs> to the 24th. There was actually, I think, blood on the floor of Walmart from (laughs) where the Tickle Me Elmo's used to be. Tickle Me Elmo made me a lot of money. It did. Oh, did you, did you buy and hoard them? We bought, we bought one of them and when my kid didn't want it anymore, we were able to sell it and make money off of it. Oh, Uh, nice. Who decorates the house in you guys' houses? Quiet. <laughs> I'll tell you what, my wife. I, you know, I kind of do. Well, okay, but, but there, there, there is yeah, a difference, isn't there? Yes, my, there is. Sure. Yeah, my wife does the inside, and my daughters help. As a matter of fact, that's what goes down the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I usually do the outside, and and I help in the inside, but. No. I usually put up the tree, and then I, I do the outside lights. My wife does the rest inside. You put up the tree? Wants, yeah. We don't even take ours down. It's artificial. <laughs> we leave the ribbons and lights in it. Yeah. And we cover console. it with a bed sheet, carry it to the basement. And it, it comes up. And wow. Yeah. I see That's Harim impressive. laughing, but Harim, you'll learn, man. <laughs> you'll learn. Just leave it set up. <laughs> Tom? I've done that. We haven't, <laughs> we, we haven't had a tree for uh, quite a while, but the lights... Okay. The, I, last year I put some lights up. You know, living up in the mountains where I do, yeah. I, I, I kind of like the, you know, that Thomas Kincaid type look on the house. So I I, I had some what's that garland that, that oh yeah yeah, yeah. And stuff and, the, and yeah. then the red bows, but living up there the the wind tore my garland apart so many times. I got so many zip ties on this. That <laughs> I, I had I had two pieces of garland to start with, and I think I ended up with nine or ten at the end of the. <laughs> It's funny, <laughs> but uh, but 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 again, you know, it, uh, it it it's hard to to know what's what's, what's right, enough? what's enough, what's too much, right? You know, do I want all the colored lights? Do I want white lights? 
I like blue and white. Um, man. I scored on the blue lights once. Our white ones um, died, and so I could only find, because it was last minute, I, I could only find blue, and I hung them out, and my wife came out and said, oh, my grandmother had blue lights, and she was all, I, uh, just a complete ex. No, if you're listening to this, I knew that. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's like, ah, uh, you know you win when they get tears in their eyes. Yeah. I, why do you think that the guys get sent outside? I mean, I thought it's equality these days. Because it's too cold outside. <laughs> My wife doesn't want to do it. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to put my wife up the ladder, and that make me old school, but yeah. equality seems to be out the window when it comes to hanging lights on the gutters. <laughs> Unless you're in my house and, and you volunteer to go outside because you love the lights. <laughs> Uh, you guys should see his look on Alex's face. It's just I volunteered to go great. outside for one reason only, so I don't have to be inside <laughs> with the Christmas music playing and the decorations. Man, I had my lights up outside and... before before Thanksgiving. So Get then out. all you had to do is plug it in as oh. soon as Thanksgiving was was meal was 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 done. Uh, evening came. We've got the icicle right lights. In. I was, was going to leave them up all year, but they show. Just leave them up all year. That's what one of our neighbors does. He's got these big yeah. Christmas lights in his window. He leaves up all year. Yeah, that's how I find my house at night. <laughs> uh, do you have one of those projectors that shows stars on your house? And no, but I've thought about that. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> yeah. When is it too soon to decorate? Oh, that's where my wife puts her foot down. She doesn't. She's she's not yeah. as enthusiastic about Christmas as I am. So for her, for her Thanksgiving is the is the cutoff. She you like, would go up before Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. See, Thanksgiving in Canada is in, in um, October, and That's so when we November first is when everybody starts decorating. But for me, if there's not a two in the date, like if it's not December twenty twenty one, it's too soon. But it doesn't give you enough time. That's yeah, the problem. You know. Thanksgiving, Christmas, you don't have enough time to enjoy the season. I, I wish the season was a lot longer. The season is twelve days. You've heard the song. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, 12 means of Christmas? I mean, the 12 uh, <laughs> Those are just your, your best 12 shopping days. you you got 12 more days to get what you need. Uh, <laughs> no, traditionally, it doesn't... I don't know. When's it too soon? To, when do you go out and... Yeah. When do you guys start decorating? It would be after after Thanksgiving, but this year's kind of changed my mind on, on decorating because of all the snow. Yeah, we right, got nailed here. Right now, I have no ambition to do anything outside right now no <laughs> not none at all well none i spent all. i spent close to i'd say close to 30 hours all told cleaning up the mess that storm left here yeah mm. probably 30 hours yeah I, I can't i can't put a ladder in in two foot of snow right now yeah so. yeah you can what you do is you put it in the snow i did this and, yeah. you, and you just go up two steps right well i could and it lurches a little and you jump on it till uh, it goes down yeah i, I, <laughs> I could i could do that but just something's telling me yeah, no. Oh, dude, to get up onto the top to. story, I we have uh, an overhang on the first story over the front door. I put a ladder on that to get up to the top oh, yeah. in the snow. Um, and uh, well, learned that's to, why men learned, don't live long. No, learn to pray. <laughs> no, I had it on the ice up top. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like I got to get up Makes to the sense. top. I had an ice dam building up. I had to get up there. Um, how do you think men approach family holidays differently from women, or do we? I. In my in my circle of guy friends, uh, yeah, for sure, we we definitely approach it differently. Um, <laughs> how? Um, you know, we don't have quite the level of heart and emotion sunk into it that say certain dear members <laughs> of my family have. <laughs> You're struggling to find the words that don't have you sleeping in the car Christmas That's right. day. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is that's interesting in and of itself that we yeah. have to step lightly on this topic so that we don't um, we don't get um, corrected when we go back that's home. Right. Yeah, well, are we going to air this before or after Christmas? We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. Ru Ruben it's... got a little change in his pocket. <laughs> earlier. You know, he's used it all up. But what, what do you think? Do th I think women approach it differently, don't you? I, I do. I I, I think there's. Um, oh, I don't know. I, do I want to use the word mushy again? But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's just this uh, this sort of emotional attachment to um, to to it that's probably stronger than at least for me than stronger than 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 what I have although I am emotionally attached to sort of a nostalgic feel of the, uh, of the wood burning stove um, my my in laws have wor burned wood in their entire life and so going th there for Christmas there's snow on the ground the the smoke's coming out of the stack and the, I mean just, just I do like the smell this, of a yeah, fireplace just, yeah. Christmas yeah. Yeah. a real feel. fireplace mm -hmm. but you know I, I think for me and, and men you know 
a uh, way to, to a man's heart is right through his stomach, right? So, yeah. uh, so for, me, for me, we wait all year long for, for what gets cooked for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so there, there is a big part of me that, that just loves it because of the food. Uh, I'm wow. with you there. I'm with uh, you there. Tom? Uh, my, my wife, uh, and again, I just have to refer to my wife because I don't know how the rest of the, the women feel. But, but she does a really good job getting the food, the, the, the preparations for that, the house cleaned and, and all that. But, but most of the bigger holidays we're visiting. You know, we have family outside of state. We have other, you know. So we don't do a lot in our house for holidays. So it's not quite as, I don't know, stressful. So I think my wife takes it really well. Hmm. Hmm. I think, I think you know, I look at Christmas, and I'm going to get in trouble for what I'm about to say, but Thanksgiving, Christmas, a lot of things there really seem to feed what are considered traditional female <clears throat> virtues, connectedness, nurture. My, my wife loves Christmas because the kids are home, and she hmm. can fawn over them. I guess for me, I mean, I say that I don't like Christmas that much. I love Christmas Day when mm-hmm. it comes. The preparation drives me crazy. But I look at it, and um, and I think, okay, you know what? Thank you, Lord. I, I provided for my family this year. We got to the end of the year. Yeah. We made mm-hmm. it. There's food on the table. We're not wealthy. We don't have a lot. But there's food on the table. My kids are safe. They're home. And I guess it's... Um, that end of it, I approach from, well, I like to provide. I, mm-hmm. I like to provide. I haven't provided, you know, I make a joke of it sometimes. Hey, Gene, look around. All this is yours because you married me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's a part of it, right? There is actually a meal on the table. And we're modest at Christmas. There's a little gift for everybody. Um, and my wife is happy. She's glowing that day, and I feel that I played a role in providing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There's a Bible verse that says that a man who does not provide for his family is worse than an infidel. Mm-hmm. And that means provide and protect, but I guess that's what's in it for me. And I, I know Gene doesn't think in those terms. It's like, my kids are home. For me, it's I raised a family, and I provided for them, and I'm thankful. It's almost another Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. We made it through another year, yeah. and I was able yeah. to be the provider, yeah. although my wife works full time. <laughs> yeah. Well there there's a there, there's something else for me. I think you know, no matter what um, what's happening in your life or in in your family's life, you uh, Christmas is a time to, to to slow down and put all those things aside and, and for a day you you just get a chance to rest. Yeah. Unless you're working. Yeah, well, I do work. Uh, it's to my shame. I guess I've been married 27 years and at least 12 of those I work Christmas day mm. at least. But that's ministry too. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. So I hear the music playing. When we come back from this break, I'm going to ask a question. What was your favorite gift of all time? And uh, this is the bullpen. It's men on Christmas and the holidays in general. We're going to take a little break. I want you to take advantage of these amazing offers for Bible study from the Voice of Prophecy. And we'll be right back. Disclosure is just one of the programs brought to you by the Voice of Prophecy, like the audio adventure program, Discovery Mountain. Discovery Mountain is a weekly Bible-based program for kids of all ages and backgrounds. Your family will enjoy faith-building stories with Jake Donovan, (laughs) Mr. Simon, and others in this small mountain town. Each summer, campers visit Discovery Mountain, where they sing songs, learn about God, and reenact a Bible story with the help of drama teachers, Miss Wendy and Miss Tamara. With 24 full episodes every year and programming every week, your family will have something uplifting to listen to every week. Listen to episodes on demand and watch video features from Director Doug at discoverymountain.com or on your favorite podcast platform. That's discoverymountain.com. (laughs) 
It is a special holiday episode of The Bullpen, which is a special episode of Disclosure from the good people at The Voice of Prophecy. My name is Sean Boonstra. We've got Alex, Tom, and Ruben in studio. We're discussing men and the holidays. And uh, I guess we're a divided house. Um, Two of you said Christmas was your favorite holiday of all time. Is there anything, gentlemen, anything that uh, drives you nuts about Christmas? Is there a downside to it? And and think broadly. I mean, as Christian men, you know, is there anything that would drive you crazy about it? It's kind of the same stuff that I mentioned when I was talking about Easter, except it's not the Easter bunny. <laughs> so it's, Santa freak you out, too? Uh, no, you know, actually, Santa does not freak me out. Maybe he did when I was little, but, um, right. you know, I think Santa's pretty cool. I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no, don't go to the mall. <laughs> we, yes, yes, we know Santa. We, we know Santa's not real at the Voice of Prophecy. Yes, we do. And we do know all of the pagan traditions that are yes, associated yes. with Christmas. So write your complaint letters to <laughs> Ruben Gomez, Box 999, Loveland, Colorado. Let me be clear. We don't North do Santa in my house just, no. just for those complaint letters. But um, but basically, you know, it is it is all the – it's not just, you know, everybody says the commercialism, but but it's the it's the just aggressive nature of how, how the companies just try to get you to buy stuff. I mean, it's just all about what you want, you, 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 right? Um, that just drives me nuts. You know, the commercials out there, you know, treat yourself. You deserve this, this kind of thing. And my kids have to see that. That, that right. bugs me. Yeah. I don't know. You, you mentioned we don't do Santa. We didn't do Santa either, and this yeah. isn't to condemn those sure. who did at all. But as we were, you know, Gene and I are converts, and uh, as we raised our kids, I was probably stricter when they were little than I am today. I'm getting squishier as I get older. <laughs> but we didn't do Santa because when it came to, if we're going to, and we understand here that December yeah. 25th is not the actual birth of Christ, but and, and, and we know the Teutonic and pagan traditions behind it and stuff, but at least for one day of the year, the whole world is willing to talk about the birth of Christ, mm-hmm. and I think there's, that's well worth celebrating. But we chose no Santa because we didn't want our kids at any point, maybe this is right, maybe it's wrong, mm-hmm. to when they find out Santa's not real, I don't want them to conflate it with the birth of Christ. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and I, and I think that happens with, with just about any any Christian thing out there. You, you, you have this... Uh, e- Easter was an, uh, another one. You said something about the Easter Bunny. So you've yeah. got you know the the, the death of, of Christ, the resurrection, and yeah. then we give Easter Bunny. You have yeah. you have Christmas, and we give Santa. It seems like yeah. everything that, that's that's Christian that's going to put uh, Christ out there. There has to be something else that grabs the attention of of folks, and and that 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 bothers me. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't know, Tom. What drives you nuts about Christmas? Well, this morning on the way in, I heard on the radio that, that there was a dispute somewhere in one of the one of the stores, and they thought oh, there was really? a shooting, yeah. and everybody's running out, mm-hmm. and, and you hear that kind of stuff. You know, it's like really, mm-hmm. you know, what, what is it that it's that drives somebody to carry a gun in a store right. on Christmas with the intent of possibly using it because someone got the last. Furby, yeah, or, you know what I mean. It's it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. We're I mean, there's 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 absolutely no Christmas spirit in that at all. No, I think that that drives me crazy about it um, a lot. Is the pressure that and and the gun thing is one thing. I think we've lost our minds and we don't really have a moral underpinning for Western society anymore. We tossed it out years ago and we're seeing the results of it. I think that's at least a little bit of it. Um, but the pressure that comes on young families or poor families, um, you know your kid's going to go back to school in January, and they're going to have to say, here's what I got for Christmas, and you feel pressure. And so we have families that are running up um, huge credit card debt mm-hmm. because they, they feel the pressure. And again, I think it was you, Ruben, who mentioned all the commercials. They feel, man, we got to live up to that. And debt is not you know what's recommended in scripture at all as a matter of fact the bible overall is Mm anti-debt and so running into debt just because you feel the pressure to give your kids a special holiday i don't know that drives me that's probably the thing that drives me nuts the most i so i I grew up in a a very poor home and and i remember that Uh, i remember going to school uh, when it started back up in january and everybody's received all these great gifts and and there was there was years that we didn't get anything at all, and so that that was tough. Mm-hmm. That really yeah. was tough. But then the pressure the parents feel now, right? It's yeah. like, mm-hmm. oh, my kid has to have a great Christmas. Yeah. 
Um, that part's always bothered me because I will be honest. I have felt the temptation to get them something that's frankly a little beyond our means because we don't believe in debt in our house. Right. And I, I have felt it. I'm being honest. I know that, you know, when I grew up, there were kids that we went to Hawaii for vacation over Christmas. Mm. My family doesn't go to Hawaii for vacation over Christmas. Right. And I want them to, I guess there comes a point where you realize that what kids are going to remember in 20 years is not the gift they got. Mm -hmm. right. They're going right. to remember their dad, I think. Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, well, sorry. You know, we, we, yeah. Were, we were just, we were <laughs> just blew his mind. About, yeah. We were just talking about this at the house, and my 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 little one, Kaylee. See, she sometimes comes out with with you know some of the most righteous comments, and and I, we were talking about Christmas. We talk about spending, and uh, somebody asked a question about what what it's all about, and and I just kind of spurted out that oh, it, it's all about uh, it's all about the stores that want to make more money. It's all it's all about these manufacturers and. And so somebody understood, uh, asked why why that was, and so we talked a little bit about economics. And Kaylee, my, my little one, she she pipes up and she says, "Well, why do we have to do gifts at all? Let's mm. let's not do any gifts. Mm. Let's let's just spend time with us and mm -hmm. and and decorating and 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 cooking and eating." And and for a moment there, I thought, you know, she's she's got it. And, mm. and now I'm I'm in a I'm in a place where I have to make a decision. Do I bring her along? And intoxicate her with the uh, with the whole com commercialization of everything, or do I foster that? She's got something going there. Do I do I foster that and really, really promote the fact that hey, let's let's really let's really think about family. Let's think about Christ. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's not get distracted here. Yeah. I, I, again, I know we know that December and there's a it's a tiny segment of Christianity, and but there is a segment that says we're not doing anything. They're like Oliver Cromwell in the 1600s. We're not doing Christmas. It's December 25th isn't the birthday of Christ and so on. I get that. But for, for, for us, we look at the principles. What is a Christ-like principle in a holiday like this? Where can I reflect the character of God to my kids and stuff? And as they get older, I'm tempted to say, let's, let's take care of somebody this Christmas, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the most depressing stories, it was Christmas Eve, I believe, and I had somebody call me saying, Pastor, this is years ago and way up north, and Pastor, a guy just called us and he's going to kill himself. And he's a trapper, and uh, I don't want to give too many details away so we can't figure out who he is. But he'd had his snowmobile break down on his trap line, and he froze his leg. He decided to walk out because no one's going to find him. They had to amputate the leg, and as soon as that happened, it was either his wife or his living girlfriend said, I'm done with you, and walked out on him. Hmm. And so Christmas Eve comes around, and he's alone. And he's threatening to take his own life. And that night, uh, a lot of things came into focus for me. I spent the evening with him. Uh, he was intoxicated, so unfortunately we had to arrest him. <laughs> you know, the police were working with me. And then we sat in the cell together Christmas Eve. I'd say that's one of the more important Christmas Eves I've had. And I thought, here's a guy who thinks nobody loves him. He wants to mm -hmm. end it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if you were to ask, I know you were a police officer before, but I think Christmas Eve is one of the high points for depression and suicide. Absolutely. Yeah. And what can we as a family do to address that? I mean, my kids have enough stuff. Um, I'll always get them a little something, but I, I like what you say. Let's foster that. Let's take care of somebody. Well, there, and there's a combination of, uh, of many things happening from, like you talked about, the, the expense, uh, the, the going into debt, um, but also, also the family. We have so many broken families, and and it is a powerful family time. And all of a sudden, you come to the end of the year, and you realize uh, many people realize that they're alone, they have nothing, and, uh, and and that starts playing with their mind. What's the role of a man in a family holiday? Well, for me at the house, um, you know, to get mushy, I guess now, <laughs> <laughs> bullpen gets mushy. Uh, no, um, yeah. No. So I, you know, I I do have four girls. And um, they 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 love the holidays. They they love Valentine's. They love getting little cards out and mm -hmm. and um, and I, I I want them to know uh, that their dad is there. That um, that provide that strength for them. Uh, I, I want them to find a, a man that that cares for them in in the future and, and loves every little thing that they do, even though I can't stand <laughs> some of this stuff, you know. <laughs> And so, you know, for me, it, it's just important to uh, to be that that father figure, that strength, that 
that um, that they know that they can turn to and they can have fun with. Hmm. Guys, the role of a man in the holidays, and uh, uh, biblically and otherwise. Mm-hmm. I think an, an example. I mean, to keep a balance, you know, with the – you don't want to go overboard on, you know – I mean, like we like Christmas, <laughs> but 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 not going overboard and 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 not just not getting too dug into it, mm-hmm. you know. Because you know, I like Christmas because of the family, like I mentioned. But you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not putting Santa and snowmen and all that blow up stuff lights out in my yard too windy up on the mountain but anyway true, right yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, j- just to keep a balance and, and you know you mentioned uh christmas you know we're going to talk about christmas here for a second uh like you mentioned everybody's at least once a year is talking about the birth of jesus and all mm-hmm. and that's kind of a that's kind of an in you know for conversation it is to a lot of people and and and, and i like i like taking that role I like taking that role, starting conversations with people. Yeah. Um, it's I, a lot of fun. I like, you know, when it comes to Christmas Eve, and I'm from a Dutch family, and they actually separate Santa from Christmas. The Santa, the Feast of St. Nicholas is actually at the beginning of December, and Christmas itself is just a church day. Oh, mm. interesting. And, um, but uh, we tend to do most of Christmas on Christmas Eve, and the fire's on, and the mm-hmm. lights are on, and that kind of stuff. And one of the things I like is I pull out my Bible and yeah. very traditional, and and we we study the birth of Christ that evening. I go from Luke two because that's what everybody, you know, uh, expects to hear that evening. And I make it a time when we can really discuss why is Jesus important? Why is the birth of Jesus important? And um, and I I guess that's the part I really do cherish. I look forward to that every year. It's like yeah. okay, I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna teach my kids why I love Jesus so much, mm-hmm. and take it's advantage of perfect. this time. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know the the Bible talks about uh, the man being the spiritual head of the household, and and I think that. Christmas, um, especially Christmas, gives a, a great opportunity to do that. Like you're saying, Friday night, uh, we do the same thing uh, on Friday. We do stockings on Friday, and then then we open the other gifts on. on you know that on the Christmas is even isn't always on Friday. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why I said Friday, but uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that must we, we must Friday have, night we always we have must a have had a, a, a special Friday night Christmas at one time <laughs> that's sticking to my mind. But uh, but yeah, Christmas Eve is what I was trying to say. But um, except we, in Puerto Rico, where exactly. they have a completely it's different. It's always on Friday. They use a metric <laughs> calendar. <laughs> but it, it is a great time to to um, to focus on the Lord. All right, let's talk about fathers when we come back from the break a little bit. Um, What's your favorite memory of your father related to the holidays? And uh, then we'll talk a little bit about your favorite passage relating to the birth of Christ because it is the holiday season and Christmas season as we're recording. Um, Do you have a favorite Christmas carol? Some of those things. And we're going to take a little break. We've got amazing, amazing offers from the Voice of Prophecy that you'll want to take advantage of. So listen to this announcement and we'll be right back. Retirement planning can be a stressful process, but it doesn't have to be. The friendly people at The Voice of Prophecy can walk you through the entire process and explain all of your options based on your specific needs. Whether you'd like to set up a trust for income or make a gift that will benefit your loved ones and change lives through The Voice of Prophecy, we're here to help. To learn more, call 1-800-348-5993. Most of us have lost a loved one to death, and the question we wrestle with in our mind is what exactly happens when we die? Do we go to heaven, or do we go to hell, as some people believe? Find the Bible's answer to this question in our free Discover Bible Guides. You can get them at VOP.com, click on the tab that says Study, or just call us at 888-456-7933. That's 888-456-7933. And 
This is Men on the Holidays, or Men on Christmas, which is a special episode of The Bullpen, which is a special episode of Disclosure, which is a special program brought to you by the good people at The Voice of Prophecy, who have been in the broadcasting business, faith-based broadcasting business, since 1929. And... uh, That's a long time. That makes us 90 years old as we're sitting here because I think we went on the air in October of 1929 for the first time, just weeks ahead of the big stock market collapse um, of 29. So we're talking about the holidays. We're talking about men and their perspective and their biblical perspective. Let me ask you this. As you think back over various holidays, maybe Christmas in particular, but, but others as well, do you have any special memories of your own fathers for the holidays? Sure, I do. Um, now, for me, it's probably a little different, but my, my dad wasn't there much for us. And so Christmas was one of those times that, that he actually would sit down with the family. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a special time. Hmm. Rest well, of you? For the, uh, for the holidays, he was always the one uh, on the grill, you know, yeah. for, for the ones in the summer. Yeah. Uh, and then the, uh, for Christmas... It was always uh, he was putting up the lights. Yeah, you know I, I can still picture it now. He he was he had, we had this old rickety wooden ladder <laughs> that he that we had I mean forever, and uh, he'd get up there and he'd he'd, uh, he'd tack up the lights the whole way around the house. Mm. You know we'd help, but yeah, he was he was he was always on that. Yeah, how many dads really want the help anyway? I don't know. Yeah. I I enjoy it for a little while, and it's like oh just let me do it. <laughs> yeah. I can you're, relate. <laughs> you're, you're dead, Ruben? Uh, I can relate to what Alex talked about in terms of, you know, um, uh, being that day that, that as a family, you know, we were, it, it was really modeling, you know, the the spiritual component, right? Bringing us, bringing us back to, to what Christmas shouldn't be, right? You know, my, he was not really, you know, and still isn't, you know, a fan of the commercialism just like I am, right? And so it was really just reminding us of, of you know, Look, you know, this is what Christ did for us, you know, and this is what um, what we're really here for, you know. It's not just about giving the presents; um, it's about it's about taking a day and and reminding ourselves, you know, of what Jesus did for us, coming to to Earth to to save us, and that the, that that His birth was the beginning of that process. Man, so my dad was self-employed my entire life and ran businesses and so we never saw much of him during the year he was always busy weekends because Mm -hmm. when everyone else went home that's when he went into the store to do the books and then and that kind of stuff Mm so on christmas we had him we had dad right right? Mm -hmm. we had dad um one of my best memories though and i i carry this with me all the time dad came home one night and said to my mom hey honey we've we've got a guest for the night it was a surprise because nobody had cell phones in those days, you know, it was a surprise. We lived way up north on the Yellowhead Highway, and it was often 40 below or colder in the Christmas mm-hmm. season, and this guy's car had broken down. And my um, my dad ran an automotive shop, and they were going to close, and this guy was just going to sleep in his car. If you sleep in your car at 40 below, there's at least an off chance you're not going to wake up in the mm-hmm. morning. Yeah. It's just, you know, even with a sleeping bag. So he brought him home, and he brought this guy in. And um, I think my mom was nervous because he slept on the couch in the basement where my brother and I had our bedroom. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, But I'll always remember, Dad brought a guy home and gave him a warm place to stay. And it was just a customer of his. He didn't have to do that, but he's not going to let this guy sleep in the car. And I thought, you know what? That's Christ-like. My dad was a godly man. And Jesus gave all. I mean, what does it really take us to take somebody in? And up there, it was so cold in the winter that often you're... We had to bend the float in the toilet so that the toilet would keep running. Because if the water stopped running into the house, the line in the yard might freeze. And it was all water. And... Um, more than once, Dad had to get out there and dig up the lawn and, and use a battery and jumper cables, and that pipe gets hot fast if you <laughs> if you short wow. it. But um, but that guy, he's 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 homeless. He's living in well, he may have a home somewhere, but he's going right. to be sleeping in his car because he's out of money and it's broken down. And I thought, you know what? That's what I want to be like. I want to be like that. I want to be right. like Dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your favorite Bible passage related to the birth of Christ? I, mm. I I remember. Now around Christmas, <clears throat> I loved the cartoons. 
I grew up with the all the Christmas cartoons. But I think I think the one that that brings back memory for for Bible verse was Charlie Brown's Christmas. Really? Yeah. Where I, what was it Linus? He gets up and he yeah. explains the true meaning of Christmas, and I think he's he's quoting Luke. And it's just it, I, I remember that that was really cool. Wow. You know Charles Schultz is from here in mm-hmm. Loveland, Colorado. Really. His place, and he's he's gone now, but there's a place out here, um, sort of halfway between the office and your house, where mm. I was hiking one day, going for a long walk, and I saw a giant bronze Snoopy at the end of the driveway, and I thought, why would there be a giant bronze Snoopy? Mm-hmm. And, oh, it's a sculpture capital here, but uh, he's, he's from here, and I do appreciate that he always seemed to weave some Christian and family values through those shows. They were kind of wholesome. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the one where Charlie Brown had the sad little tree? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the yeah. needles falling off. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Gene and I had one of those our first Christmas together. I went out and cut a little sapling off in 45 below, and <laughs> and uh, it was sad and spindly. Yeah. yeah that's funny. The rest of you, uh, favorite Bible passages, favorite? Uh, for me, you know, for me, uh, behold, a virgin shall conceive. Isaiah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, yeah. I just think about the whole impossibility of that, and and that just leads me to the whole impossibility of of our salvation and 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 the gift. You talk about uh, giving gifts on Christmas. Well, this is this is the greatest gift. The the King of the universe has has given himself, and and the way that he did it is 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 it's it's not producible by anybody. It, it's like uh, God's God's salvation for for humankind um, is something that that goes beyond all measure. It answers any kind of questions, and um, and God did it in such a way that no one can ever make a mistake and and uh, and place somebody else in his place. Or it's it's just it's it's so miraculous and uh, and massive that um, that 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 virgin. Uh, verse just just stands out to me. It's That's a, Isaiah seven. Is it Isaiah seven or nine? It's Isaiah. I was actually looking. At I'm it like the now. Apostle Paul. He always is writing somewhere. It's in, it's it is in written. the Bible. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Yeah. It's in the Bible. Yeah. So I was looking it up and I turned my phone back on and started uh, sending texts. Uh, you got a favorite, Reuben? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, actually, I don't know if I have a favorite, but but I was going to going to talk about that experience when when Mary, you know, similar to what Alex said, when when the angel, you know came to her and said, you know, do not be afraid, you know, for, and, and he delivered the news to her. I, to me, from, uh, from childhood, really, that, that has just fascinated me. I've always tried to put myself, you know, as a fly on the wall in that room when that happened. And, and there's, there's just something, uh, what's the word, um, just wondrous about, about it when I see it in my head about how it went down and, and, and what it must have been like to be married to receive that news, you know, um, first, you know, probably being afraid and then not being afraid when you realize what's really happening here. So, yeah, for for me, it's Micah 5, 2 out of you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah. And the fact that Christ mm-hmm. is born in Bethlehem, that's not where his family's from. They're from they're from Nazareth to make that happen, to make Micah come to pass. Augustus, there had to be the census. There had to be a Roman census mm-hmm. in play. And I've grown to love history since I became a Christian, and so I've gone back and looked like, okay, what had to happen in what sequence in order for them to be mm-hmm. in Bethlehem on the day that Christ is born? And it's mind-boggling. Yeah. This political uprising had to happen. This political uh, underpinning had to be in place for the Roman Empire to think it necessary to collect taxes and, and have the census and have everybody travel home. And I think I'm in line with what you've said, Alex, it's impossible. And there's so much of this in the Bible that there's no mistaking who Jesus is when he comes. Yeah. He comes on time. He comes the way he said to come. Virgin birth in the right town, even though it's not home. That's right. Um, it's 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 mind-boggling to me. What about Christmas yeah. songs? Oh, man. Oh, oh, yeah. The big mush. <laughs> the big mush just stepped up to I'll the microphone. What. Yeah. Uh, probably what, what child is this? Oh. Green sleeves. Yeah, at, uh, it took mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, there is, a, there is, um, uh, you know, Cohen's Hallelujah, 
And there's uh, there's a group that is not a no, Christmas no, song. I, no, that's not a Christmas song. <laughs> that but, is not a Christmas. But that is a dark, depressing there's a, song. There's a group, and I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it right now. But they put the pentatonics, or it's not penta- pentatonics. Take but, five. Uh, no, um, I'd have to look it up. Uh, I should have looked it up. But uh, they they took um, they took and turned it into a Christmas song. Yeah, dude, it's it is the lyrics are are spot on. It's just a powerful song. So that really? that's that's a that's a great. There's so much great, good Christmas music, and huh. that's why yeah. that's why we should be playing Christmas. Christmas music all year long. Oh no. Because it's about Christ. <laughs> oh no. All year long. There you go. No. Tom, you got a favorite? Yeah, I got two. Um, oh, one of the old gosh. traditional ones, uh, the, the one, Do You See What I See? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good I, one. I, I love that one. And then one of the more modern one, the uh, Where Are You Christmas by Faith Hill. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know this one. I Well, I'm not going to sing it. No, no. But, okay. But no, no. I'm writing it down. But, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I have Spotify. I, I just I just like I like her voice I like the the song you know it's like where are you Christmas you know just, it's kind of like what happened what happened why aren't why aren't why aren't we cheerful anymore uh, I don't know all the words and I might even be way off base on the on the meaning of the song but uh, when it comes on I, I turn it up real loud well, I'm gonna look that That's up I've got a Spotify account yeah. so. About the family Spotify account. That is marvelous. I haven't bought nice. a CD in years. I, <laughs> nice. Favorite song for me, it's going to be the oddball here, the outlier, but um, I'm the son of Dutch immigrants, and the Dutch have a special seasonal song. And they, it's oddly enough, it's a Christmas song, and they, when I grew up, we sang it in, on New Year's Eve. We had to go to church for every occasion. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't have a Valentine's Day service <laughs> in the church I grew up in, you know, basically reformed wasn't Dutch Reformed, that's a specific denomination, but we were Reformed in Dutch. And and they sang one called Ira Seichelt, and that is glory to God in the highest, and it completely mimics. Oh, it, it's a repeat of what the angels sang to the shepherds that night, and the whole congregation stands, and they end the year on this song. And it's moving to me. I, I've played it. I've went and found YouTube videos. You to say, hey, Jean, listen huh. to this. And she's not Dutch. And she's like, okay, that's nice. That's what do you nice. mean not nice? It's, it's the greatest song ever written, but there's something about it. And I guess it gets to me because humanity misses. John says that light came into the world and the light did not comprehend mm-hmm. The world did not comprehend yeah. it. Shepherds. The angels appear to shepherds, not to the king. That's not right, to the yeah, Sanhedrin, right. but to shepherds, and it teaches me something about. I mean, Jesus would have been hum- humiliating himself to have been born in the palace that night, but he's born in a feed box. Yeah, he's laid in a well, not born in the feed box. He's laid in the feed box. Mm-hmm. I guess the takeaway for me, if I really want to dwell on the birth of Christ, it's, you know, I feel entitled some days. Why is this happening to me? And when I look at Jesus as my example, mm, guys, what do you think? Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right on. I I am talking about modern songs. Uh, David Phelps uh, sings one on. Uh, it's just titled "Joy." Incredible lyrics. Absolutely incredible. It, it's talking about uh, the Father giving the Son to, to to the world and and commanding all the angels to sing and and right, or, right or at, uh, about the time of his birth. It, it it's just absolutely powerful. But yeah, um, you know, heaven came down to earth. Uh-huh. And and we missed it largely. Yeah, largely. Yeah, yeah. The birth of Christ. We've only got seconds to go, and this really should be the point. <laughs> but a um, couple words on it, guys. Why is it important to you? I mean, without the birth of Christ, what would we have, right? You know, um, and we got nothing. We got nothing. It, it it started the process of salvation. You know, here on earth. You know, that's what I teach my kids. It was. This is why we remember it. Mm-hmm. it you know how much. How much does God love us? I yeah. mean, it's just, it, yeah. it's, I can't fathom it. Mm-hmm. No, neither can I. Hey, we've got to sign off. We're hoping your family's enjoying the, the holiday season. Take some time with your family. Sit down and read about the birth of Christ and see what God gave for us and why giving truly is better than receiving. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're wishing you the best and your family. Until next time, this is Sean.